Icon of the Seas is Royal Caribbean's newest ship. It's one of the newest ships in the world. And is it my new favorite ship? I get asked all the time, Matt, what is your favorite cruise ship? Whether it's simply to see how their opinion matches mine or people look at it as a recommendation of which ship to sail on, I usually have a favorite ship out there. And for a long time, it had been Wonder of the Seas. I try not to go towards just whatever the newest ship in the world is being my favorite, but it's hard to overlook the latest and greatest. And that was definitely the case with Icon of the Seas. But when I went on the Icon of the Seas inaugural sailing and then went on Wonder of the Seas, which had been my favorite cruise ship in March, just a couple of weeks later, I really wanted to compare how these two ships stacked up. Many people are curious what makes the Icon class different than the Oasis class. And all cruise ships are basically categorized into a class of ships. Think of it like car models. When you go car shopping, do you want a pickup truck? Do you want a sedan? Do you want an extended cab? Or do you want a smaller coupe, right? This essentially is the basis of how cruise ships are also organized in the sense that they have some basic characteristics that group ships together. Icon of the Seas is the first ship in the Icon class, whereas Wonder of the Seas is the sixth Oasis class ship. And while the two ships do share many similarities, including water slides, an ice skating rink, and a lot of accommodations, there are quite a few ways in which the vessels do differ from one another. It's also important to remember that Wonder is the sixth in the line, which means that Royal Caribbean has opportunities to iterate and improve upon, whereas Icon is the first. And if you're a big follower of technology, you always know that like version 1.0 is rarely the best in the line, and rather it's the first foray into it, and usually follow-up versions end up being more refined and improved. And so comparing Icon to Wonder, I really started to think about, are these two ships going to compare well against each other? And more importantly, which would I prefer? Icon of the Seas is 20 decks high, has 250,800 tons, and is now the world's biggest cruise ship out there. And it appeals to a wide range of cruisers, including myself, because I love the variety that's there. It's certainly been a really the case for why I cruise on Royal Caribbean in general. I like choice, and there are plenty of choices on there. When I walked on board Icon of the Seas for the very first time and went on the Royal Promenade, which is not a new concept, by the way, the Royal Promenade has been around since the Voyager class, which debuted back in the very late 1990s. But this was the first ship to have a wide open Royal Promenade that has windows, shops, and of course, certain venues and bars and whatnot. There's sunlight, new restaurants, and of course, the Pearl. Now, every single one of these doesn't really stand out on its own, but together, I was really impressed by the flow of the multi-deck high promenade area and just how open and inviting the area was. The Pearl is certainly pretty, great for a photo op, and then you have Pearl Cafe, which might be the best quick service restaurant Royal Caribbean has ever come up with. So convenient, so easy. And then, of course, within the promenade, you have a number of awesome venues. Some are familiar, like the Schooner Bar and the English Style Pub, which are always favorites of mine. You also have Dueling Pianos, a brand new area. The Attic Comedy Club being up here is also nice to have that as well. And I really appreciated just the way that this familiar cruise ship is new and changing. So while the promenade was familiar, I really wanted to go up to the Aqua Dome because that's a neighborhood that is certainly very different. While we do have Aqua Theaters on Oasis class ships, this is a brand new neighborhood dedicated to just this area and something totally different. Instead of being on the back of the ship, it's on the top of the ship all the way forward. And I've always appreciated the idea of, of course, the Aqua Theater itself, but I was curious, how would this area feel? Would it just be like the Aqua Theater and everything else? Or would this neighborhood truly feel like a place I wanted to hang out. And during the daytime, the Aqua Theater neighborhood is a fantastic chill out, relax, and enjoy your time. You know, not everybody necessarily wants to go spend time at the pool deck. Rather, some people like enjoying just being out with friends, being able to have a great view, and of course, plenty of sunlight. When you walk into the Aqua Dome, I was blown away by how staggering this place is. From the theater in the middle, to the overlook seating in front, to the food hall, I never thought I would want to spend as much time here as I did once I walked in. The giant glass dome encompasses places to chill, eat, and be entertained. Plus, there are cabins within the neighborhood as well. I really think this area is the sleeper hit of the ship because it has fantastic seating, especially in the pods. Now, these are first come, first seated, and I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy spending their time here in the sea day. And then, of course, there's the Aquadome Market, which is Royal Caribbean's first 
food hall concept. And I got to be honest with you, I wanted to eat there every day when I was on board. Greek, Asian, French, and whatever mac and cheese constitutes is found here. It's complimentary, freshly made, and I really could eat this every single day of the cruise. Equally impressive is the pool deck. And while I don't love the pool deck on most ships in the sense that I don't spend like every day up there and go on sea days and hang out a lot, I really was impressed by Royal Caribbean's vision for how they could redo the pool deck. Instead of having like a pool and having a giant party surrounding it, Royal Caribbean wanted to distribute the pools outwards. So there's not a centralized pool. There are many different pools. Many of them face the ocean. And there are different ideas behind each of them, right? You have the Swim and Tonic Bar, which is a swim-up bar, which is, of course, the most popular concept that Royal Caribbean incorporated over at Perfect Day Coca Key. And now you have it on a cruise ship. Then you have Royal Bay, which is your traditional main pool. You've got Cloud 7, which is right up against the side of the ship. And, of course, the Hideaway Neighborhood, which is the adult-only pool, but it's on the back of the ship, which is a concept that Royal Caribbean never had before, a pool all the way in the back. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the pool all the way in the back also, down in Surfside, which is for the kids, obviously. In fact, so many areas of the ship really stood out, especially areas that we've been familiar with. Central Park, not a new concept as well. But Royal Caribbean really rethought this area. Rather than being a copy of the Oasis class, they made some really subtle changes, right? First of all, putting a Zoomy in here, and by the way, this is like the best Izumi in the entire fleet. I've always been a fan of this Japanese restaurant, but they have plenty more space. It really feels like a restaurant rather than like a squeezed in couple of hibachi tables. There's the champagne window bubbles, there's a jazz bar, and I really appreciate that Royal Caribbean got rid of a lot of the superstructures that were in the middle of the park. So that way, when you're in the park, you can really feel like you're in a neighborhood and you can see throughout the entire area. And at nighttime, my goodness, Central Park is really pretty, and I love the ambiance of it. It's a great place to actually hang out. For the Surfside neighborhood, which of course is the family-centric area of the ship, my only regret, my only disappointment with it is that my kids are really too old to properly appreciate this. I remember going on Freedom of the Seas and it having a nursery, and I was blown away by that. So if my kids had been back at the age of, you know, three to six years old, my goodness, Surfside would have been a godsend of a change there. Now, my kids are a little too old to really truly appreciate it, although my nine-year-old can probably still find something to do here. It's undeniable that Royal Caribbean has truly come up with an amazing area that really redefines what kids can be. Traditionally, when you think of, oh, a cruise ship has things for kids to do, they just have like, you know, a pool or a carousel or something that's just kind of like minuscule, right? The boardwalk is a great example of this in the Oasis class because it's not a minuscule area by any means, but it has the basics. Here on Surfside, it goes well beyond the basics, and that truly stands out when you look at that. And if there's one area of Icon of the Seas that I think after going on it, you'll truly appreciate when you go on any other cruise ship, it's the destination elevators. So an Icon, instead of pushing a button and you know waiting for the elevator to come to you and then indicating in the elevator where you want to go, instead there are destination elevators and Icon. You push on a panel, which floor you'd like to go to, and it will assign you an elevator. Then you wait for that elevator, and that elevator comes in there, and there's no buttons inside the elevator. It simply takes you to the floors that have already been predetermined. This is a much more efficient way to get guests from A to B. And trust me when I tell you, this is a true game changer and one of the biggest wows of Icon of the Seas. When I went on Icon and then went on Allure of the Seas and then Wonder of the Seas after that, I can't tell you how many times I thought every single time I went to the elevator, I wish I was on Icon because this is already not as great. Having to wait for elevators and be stuck there, whether it's one minute, five minutes, or 75 seconds, it just always seemed way too long, and that was a major miss from Icon. When I went on Wonder of the Seas and I got back on board that ship specifically, you know, I certainly found that the difference in experiences was not as much as like when I went on Allure of the Seas. Wonder is a brand new ship. It came out just a couple of years before Icon. So a lot of the ideas that we find on Icon were certainly available on Wonder. It's not like you find when you go on a much smaller or older ship in which you have decades of differences in the thought process and design of a cruise ship. And sailing on Icon, it was familiar and fantastic. I love the Oasis class. In fact, when I talk to anybody about which ship they should go on for their very first cruise, the Oasis class always comes to mind. There is plenty to see, do, and experience on Wonder of the Seas. And I was reminded just how much space there truly is on the ship, especially on the pool decks. In fact, a lot of people, and I think they may be right, about the Solarium being on Wonder of the Seas, is a more truly enclosed area. Now, Hideaway is fantastic on Icon, but there is little to no shade over here. And as somebody who does not want to spend all the time in the sun baking, I appreciate there's a climate-controlled, 
solarium area with a pool at the front of the ship. The fact is adults only, that never resonated with me. I just don't care about that. But I do like climate controlled and the fact that it offers way more space. Speaking of space, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that the Wonder of the Sea Suite neighborhood is still the best in the fleet, specifically the Suite Sun Deck. Even Icon didn't get this right in my opinion. By having the Suite Sun Deck with the neighborhood integrated so close on Wonder of the Seas, I really like this flow a lot better because Wonder's Sweet Sun Deck has, of course, chairs to sit in, plenty of shade, that is important as well, and a little pool. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. It's not like a hot tub. It's not a pool. It's You guys can let me know in the comments below what you want to call this area, but I really like this quite a bit, and I think it just works better, and I was more satisfied with it on Wonder than I even was with the Sweet Neighborhood on Icon of the Seas. Maybe because it's a little bit easier to get to, I'm not sure, but I just felt like I was more drawn to be able to spend more time on the Sweet Sun Deck on Wonder than I was on Icon. Both ships have plenty of attractions on board and activities, right? You're going to find water slides, a sport court, flow rider, mini golf course, you get all that. Now, it's undeniable that Icon of the Seas has a water park, six slides, and that really makes a difference, especially for kids who are looking for more than just, you know, a water slide. Because the water slides on Wonder and truly the rest of Royal Caribbean's fleet are pretty much two racer slides, and if you're lucky on an Oasis class ship, you get the Champagne Bowl slide. Those aren't bad, but they get repetitive, whereas I think Icon's water park, which has, of course, double the amount of slides and more variety in terms of the various slides you have, I think it does stand out and is a really nice option there as well. In terms of specialty dining, there were a couple things that really stood out. Earlier, I talked about how much I really appreciated the size and layout of Izumi on Icon of the Seas, but I gotta admit, Playmakers on Wonder is much better. First of all, the Playmakers location Icon is definitely a mistake. I fully expect Royal Caribbean, probably not with Star of the Seas, but whatever the third Icon class, to fix, because the problem is its location. It's located right by the entrance to the ice skating rink, whereas on Wonder of the Seas, it's in the boardwalk. And while the Playmakers location icon is fully enclosed and air conditioned, whereas Playmakers on Wonder is like pseudo air conditioned, I still think the layout and the flow on Wonder is far superior. And Wonder of the Seas also has the Mason Jar, which is a Southern American restaurant. But the bar experience there is the best bar across Royal Caribbean's fleet, bar none. I don't, maybe it's just the country music, maybe it's the variety of drinks they serve just at the Mason Jar, or the friendly bartenders there, but this is one of my favorite bars. No, let me rephrase that. It is my favorite bar to go to on any Royal Caribbean ship, and Icon doesn't have that. I like dueling pianos, although it's nearly impossible to get in there because it's so popular that I just really gravitated more towards the Mason Jar, and I really love that venue. Now, it looks like it's going to be coming to Utopia of the Seas, so... There'll be opportunities to do that on other ships. But while I did enjoy dueling pianos, I found Mason Jar just a little more approachable and certainly equally entertaining. Even though all Royal Caribbean ships offer impressive entertainment options, production shows on the fleet's newest ships definitely go above and beyond. Both Icon and Wonder offer spectacular entertainment choices, but perhaps the most major difference between the two ships is in the Aqua Theater. Oasis class ships, including Wonder, are known for their outdoor Aqua Theater, where you can enjoy these high energy performances. On Icon, the Aqua Theater is of course within the Aqua Dome, which we talked about earlier. And the big difference here is that the weather is not nearly as much of a factor. Now, if the ship is rocking too much, that will still cancel a show, but at least you don't have to worry about rain or wind being an issue here on Icon of the Seas. Both ships have an ice skating rink with absolute zero on Icon and Studio B on Wonder. The difference really between these beyond the layout because absolute zero has an oval shape whereas Studio B has a square shape is the show quality and certainly, I think Icon gets another edge here because they have a little more technology to truly transform this space. Projection mapping is not new to Icon. It's been used on Wonder this season on their rink as well. But this seems to be like, really, they've mastered it here on Icon, and it truly stands out. But I'd be remiss to tell you that if I didn't have a great time at the ice skating show on Wonder as well. I really think, though, when you talk about entertainment, show-wise, the game changer has to go into Icon with the Wizard of Oz. Now, Wonder of the Seas doesn't have a Broadway show, neither does Icon for that matter, but the Effector show is the premier show on Wonder, and Wizard of Oz is the premier show on Icon, and the Wizard of Oz is heads and shoulders way better. Number one, Wizard of Oz has an actual plot. Effectors has a very, very loose plot, but there's a lot more to the story with Wizard of Oz. Not only is it familiar, but it also provides a lot of great performances, and the effects and sets are just stunning on Icon of the Seas. 
If there's one thing I really wish Icon would have incorporated more of from Wonder, it's the stateroom design. Now listen, I like my cabins on both ships, but having the storage space on Wonder was sorely missed on Icon. Royal Caribbean wanted to, I think, come up with a more efficient or more modern take on storage on Icon of the Seas with their staterooms. And so they came up with more like these like new age to try to rethink what a cabin design was to look like. And the result was it felt like there was a lot less space. Now, don't get me wrong. There's enough space for your stuff. It's not like you're going to run out of it. But on Wonder of the Seas, there was like way more space than I ever can use. And that really felt good in the back of my mind to have that. On Icon, there's a lot less storage space within the cabins. And that really stood out to me, especially considering that some of the storage space that was on Icon were these baskets that you could put stuff in. That's a neat idea until you realize what you're going to put in there because the baskets are kind of on the smaller side. It's probably going to be like your socks and underwear and t-shirts. And if you got people coming into your cabin, like I don't want them to see that stuff. Like I barely want to see that stuff in my own room. I'm not sure why baskets needed to be this replacement for what would have otherwise been drawers, but something small and simple, but I still appreciated that more on Wonder of the Seas. Speaking of cabins, I'm going to go against the grain here because Royal Caribbean talks about how Icon of the Seas has more cabins for families with more than four guests, and they do. The problem is they never really thought the bathroom situation out. Now, if your kids are really young, this really isn't an issue, but when you got teenagers sharing one bathroom with four, five, or six people, is a major problem. And a lot of these cabins on Icon don't have more than one bathroom. If it seems like I'm being a prude on this one, I'm telling you, in practice, having one bathroom for more than four people is problematic. And I don't know why they didn't include more bathrooms. Even the suites, if you're saying, you know what, we're gonna throw money at the problem, good luck finding a cabin that can accommodate four or more people that has more than one bathroom in it. It's actually more of a challenge than you might think. And I'm not sure why Royal Green went against this. Whereas on Wonder of the Seas, while they don't have these like, you know, bigger cabins like the family infinite balconies and whatnot, they do have a lot more rooms that seem to cater towards families in the sense they have more bathrooms in it. Maybe this is just a math thing. Let me know in the comments below if that matters to you. But it was very noticeable when we were booking our cruise on Icon that it was a bit of a struggle. Even though there were rooms that can accommodate our family, there weren't a lot of cabins that had the number of bathrooms we were looking for. And if you're sharing a cabin with other adults, which is something a lot of sometimes people do with friends and family, I would think that's equally an issue, even more so than sharing a cabin with your kids. The bottom line is Icon and Wonder are without a doubt the cream of the crop in Royal Caribbean's fleet. Each vessel provides the best of the best that Royal Caribbean has to offer. Whether it's new restaurants, modern staterooms, state-of-the-art entertainment, you name it, it is a good choice. So, there is no wrong choice when you're deciding between the two ships. Rather, what I'm talking about here is comparing and contrasting. And yes, ultimately, Icon is my favorite ship in the fleet. Not because it's necessarily the newest, but they have made advances and progressions here that truly stand out when you look at existing ships that are out there. I can appreciate Wonder of the Seas and other Royal Caribbean cruise ships, but I got to admit, Icon is definitely my favorite within the fleet now because those changes that I didn't know I needed, I definitely liked. Let me know in the comments below if you've sailed on Icon of the Seas, your thoughts on how Icon compares to other ships, and did you also come to the same conclusion thinking that, you know what, I didn't realize I needed these things, but boy, am I glad they have them on Icon. While you're below our video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube will still have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.